Well, it's kind of hard because I've been around since mud, it seems, you know, a long time. I do rem uh, remember, um, uh, I've never really had a bad session. Even the sessions that have gone not so good, I didn't consider it to be bad. And that you get a lot of learning from all kinds of situations. Also, too, I found that every time that I liked something very, very much, it didn't do well. Whenever I uh, um, uh, did not like something, not whenever, but sometimes when I say I didn't particularly care for this, big hit record. So I stopped uh, looking at it that way. I do remember Gary McFarlane very, very well. Gary McFarlane and Cal Jada. Um, I did a lot of recordings with them. Uh, uh, and I enjoyed that very, very much because it was quasi-Latin. Uh, when I say quasi, half Latin, Latinish e, I would say. And New York is full of Latino, you know, music from all parts of the uh, Latino world. Um, I remember Gary McFarlane especially in that I did a, a, a record called America the Beautiful. It was a, a symphony um, uh, for America the Beautiful per se. Very, very beautiful. Uh, he did it with a symphony orchestra and used uh, electric bass. And so I remember that music very, very much. I also remember Marlena Shaw uh, who is this bitch anyway is the name of that album. And um, uh, the musicians were Harvey Mason, David T. Walker, and Larry Nash. And it was just wonderful working with them. We tour uh, every summer uh, with that particular band and it's wonderful. Uh, I, I remember that very well. I remember uh, most of uh, Roberta Flack and Aretha Franklin sessions and that um, those two artists are very great artists. Um, and I enjoyed doing that uh, a whole lot. Other than that, probably when I get in my car going back home, I'll think of two or three more that I could name. But like I do uh, enjoy my New York career. I did enjoy my New York career and my Hollywood career with uh, drummers like Harvey Mason and Hollywood and um, people like Herb Lavelle uh, and of course Bernard Purdy in New York. Um, Richard T., of course, I loved him dearly, and he was great to work. I did a lot of recordings with Richard. Um, Lanny Hartley, um, uh, not a lot of recordings, but every time I played with Lanny Hartley in L.A., it was such a breath of fresh air. So I can go on and on and on and on about musicians, but um, when you ask that question, those are the things that pop right up. And James Gatson, of course, I did a lot of recording with, and it was a pleasure to work with him. Well, it, it, it's kind of hard to say because um, in New York there were a lot of great drummers like there are now. And uh, my load of working was uh, with Herb Lavelle, Bernard Purdy, Jimmy Johnson, um, and um, Gary Chester. Uh, so it's hard to pick one other than I did most of my New York work with Bernard Purdy. In Hollywood, I did most of my work with James Gatson uh, and, of course, Harvey Mason. Um, uh, they were the people that I mainly worked with a whole lot. Also, to Harold Mason, um, uh, Harold and Harvey, not related. Uh, but those drummers come to mind when you mention um, drummers that I've spent time with. Oh, just absolutely great. I enjoyed Sadao very, very much, and that that was my first trip to Japan uh, with Sadao Watanabe, and we were there for six weeks. Uh, and I saw every city. We, we went through every city just about, you know, in Japan. Uh, and I enjoyed uh, him as a musician. Um, I also enjoyed working with uh, Teramasu uh, um who was a very good musician, and the music that, uh, uh, that he was playing was very, very good uh, for me, for my spirit. I enjoyed that very, very much. Of course, people like Aretha Franklin, uh, uh, very soul-stirring in working with her, um, uh, very spiritually worth it, you know, and musically with the band that she had, you know, at that time. Uh, 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 Donny Hathaway, top of the mart, uh, a pure genius. Uh, he played good bass, he played uh, good drums. Um, and of course, a piano player, but he was a good friend and uh, very, very, um, Again, spiritually uh, uh, worth it in working around him. Also, too, very fortunate. You know, there are a lot of bass players in Chicago and in New York and in L.A. 
and I'm uh, pretty sure a lot of them got a chance to work with him, but I value the time that I spent with uh, Donny Hathaway. Now, King Curtis is my musical father in a way, and that uh, when I left home and I got to New York and uh, started working in New York City, and finally in joining King Curtis's band, they were the King Curtis All-Stars at that time, and um, uh, a great uh, university, I'd say, being with him. We did the 65 uh, Beatle Tour of the United States, and that was very exciting, as you can imagine. Also, too, when I say he was a, more like a musical father, one of many that I can say, and that he taught how he taught great musicianship uh, to the band. Um, time, music, ear, training. Uh, he was a great master and a great teacher. Uh, with King Curtis, that was my beginning into the real world, per se, although I know that when I was playing at home and also playing around New York City, that was also the real world. But with King Curtis, I got a chance to wear a uniform. I got a chance to travel all over. And um, with great musicians, Cornell Dupree, uh, Ray Lucas, and George Stubbs, and myself. And, and uh, a great four years that I had there. Great, great four years. I remember Dwayne Allman uh, personally. I don't remember recording. Uh, with Dwayne Allman, but uh, Dwayne Allman was very, very close to King Curtis. They were, uh, uh, they were very close, and of course, uh, people like Dwayne uh, you would see socially. So, like I saw him a lot socially. Now, I do remember when I look at uh, my AF of M reports, you know, I do sort of remember doing something with Dwayne, with with, with, with Dwayne, but I can't remember it. You know, it's going back so far, and also too, I was involved in a lot of music at that time. But I socially, like I did uh, uh, talk with him and hang with him, uh, but the music I don't remember. Well, no, it, it sort of was a situation where uh, Walter and Donald, their music, they did not want, uh, I don't believe they wanted things. Um, you see, at that time, the only person that was slapping the bass of any notoriety on records was Lewis Johnson. And Lewis Johnson, a great musician, you know, a great slapper. And, uh, but there were, there, there were some people in the industry, including myself, that didn't like the sound of the bass because uh, the, the, the kind of instrument that he was playing and when he was slapping it, he had to put so much treble on it that it didn't sound, it sounded okay now, don't get me wrong. He sounded great, but didn't sort of kind of, I didn't want to do that. The instrument that I was playing slapped like a, an upright, had a good wood sound on it. And back in those days, slapping wasn't really yet quite popular. And so uh, Walter and Donald, or Gary, I forget who, they really made it clear from the very beginning that they did sort of kind of didn't like, they didn't want slapping uh, for whatever reason. That is probably the same reason why, I mean, although I, I choose when I want to slap, if I can slap to it, but basically they didn't want it. Jeff Beccaro, I had done a lot of recordings with Jeff Beccaro, and we were very close friends. And, uh, and I'd done a lot of slapping uh, when Jeff was at drum on sessions and he was always walking around with this air bass. He see me, rainy, <laughs> you know? And so like on this session, he, I wanted to do it, but of course I wouldn't because they had earlier had already said they didn't want it. And he was saying, rainy, go ahead. I said, yes. And they were, you know, these, uh, the dividers in the studio that you have around. So I just put one in front of me there in the glass, put one in front of me and sort of like turned around like this to play like I'm playing with Jeff. They weren't really listening for a bass track at that time. They were just listening for drums or another instrument. So I could just about do anything because they weren't listening. They were recording it, but they were gonna work on me next, which was their style. So once they started working on with me, I didn't play, I didn't slap the bridge to pay. I played fingers, and they had heard me playing something else when they were listening to drums or whatever instrument they were listening to. And, uh, and they said, does it sound it? Are you doing something? I said, well, and he said, Jeff said he was slapping it. And I said, well, let's hear that again. And, we, and I said, I did that again. We tried it over and over, and, you know, and it wasn't quite the way that it would have been because now the attention's on me. So if I'm, uh, I think I'm correct in saying that the track that they used was a track that I had turned myself away from them because it was the most, it was more honest feeling, a better honest feeling.
And so they accepted it. That's the only thing. I mean, the bridge of peg. Other than that, no more slapping, you know.